Hello, hello, and welcome to another wonderful episode of Submitted for Your Approval, the weekly card review show for Collective, the community-created card game where you, 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 the person watching, make the cards. I'm joined today by my faithful co-host, uh, Grief. Howdy, folks. And my rather sleepy-looking co-host, Empty Folder. Hello, everyone. Okay, we're just going to jump straight into it with the accepted submissions. So what makes these different from active submissions, which we'll go into later in the show, is that these cards are already in the game. No takesies, backsies. Uh, Twin Stole is a, a two-drop mind, three-two elemental from Main War, with summon, flip the order of cards in your deck. So we actually already encountered, uh, this is actually the second card with this effect, because uh, we have Twist the Globe, the token off of Atlas. But this just does that. And so this can actually play into some fun strategies with bottom of the deck stuff. And also, it's just a cute little three, too. I don't know. I like it. Grief, what do you think of this? That's cute. Is that the exact same wording as the globe? Or is the globe not saying... I think Flip globe has different wording, wording, but it does basically the same thing. It does basically the same because I be, uh, as much as Twimsel is cute, I just don't like the wording on it. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's something always fixable via cosmetic, so. Yeah. MD, what do you oh, think of this? Yeah, I mean, it's totally fine. It's support for the new hero. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit bad before you get your hero power. Um, maybe if we get some other cards to actually put things on the bottom of your deck that you want to move to the top, could be a bit more useful before then. Yeah, well, there's some room for some other synergies in Main War, so we'll we'll kind of see. Um, I know that that's why it ended up in that realm, is because that's the thing that they might want to want to do. Okie dokie, then. Moving right along. The Rose Gold Flagon is a two-drop strength Curio artifact from Mortstall, Realm of the Dead Things. Withdraw a card with blood in the name, then you may destroy an ally unit to gain mana equal to this card's mana cost. So I'm not a fan of the name-based synergies. I made that abundantly clear here. But I do like Curio. So let's let us let us take a look at this card. Um, you get a weird tutor and then the ability to destroy an ally unit to gain either two mana or three mana, depending on whether you're running this off affinity. Um, any thoughts on this, Grief? I love it. Finally. Finally name-based stuff in the game. Ugh. <laughs> because this is this is just cool, and I don't care what you're thinking. I like this. This is good, finally. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty decent off, uh, off affinity tool, considering that, okay, off affinity, maybe if we have like blood stuff in mind or in spirit, this is even more efficient in terms of the mana refund. And there are some interesting entombs in off affinity cards as well, not just in the, uh, not just for mod style or self sex stuff in, uh, in red, which is, yeah, okay, blood. You can probably find strand cards with it. Um, but yeah, this is just such a versatile, uh, just a versatile tutor for such a quirky little um, uh, corner case of cards that you may or may not want to find. And makes cards that are that are uh, that makes this card kind of interesting for the future because every cool card you want to maybe or maybe not have, uh, find out of it for your aggro deck, for your combo deck, or for your control deck that just so happens to have blood in its name um, is uh, is a total bro target with it. Empty, what do you think of this? Yeah, it, it's definitely interesting. Um, there's not that much sack fodder going around. Um, we do still have gathering tree, but it's always a bit awkward with cards like this because you um, often want to use it on like a one drop. Um, and then, of course, if you don't draw your tree, um, there's not that many other good options. Um, it's also a bit awkward. There's not that much you actually want to tutor with it right now. Um, I could see a very interesting blood painter deck. Um, making use of the off affinity shenanigans. That could be really cool. Mm. Um, but of course, then you need to find sack fodder for that deck because mm. the, the thing with this card is that it's extremely slow if you don't have something to sack to it. Mm. And speaking of cards with colors in the name, the Crimson Crook is, the, is a three drop strength 
One for a vampire trickster from Mort Stahl, Realm of the Dead Things, with Leap. And when a card enters a player's hand, they take one damage. So this is both interesting penalty for any sort of shuffle draw shenanigans, any sort of uh, certain tutor shenanigans. Very interesting piece from um, Korn. Uh, it feels very different than a lot of the Mort Stahl things before, and just the variety and the levels of the color. Um Overall, I'd say this is pretty cool looking. Um, MD, what do you think of this? Yeah, this is a really interesting card. Uh, I love the idea of having like a wheel effect combo deck. Um, and then on top of that, it just like very naturally um, deals with a lot of meta decks very effectively. Like there's so many decks where you're just going to get a ton of free damage off this. Even just against like Perlma or Cam. Like they're constantly just randomly adding stuff to their hand off their passives, mm -hmm. and you can just get a ton of free damage off this. And of course, in pain, um, you're just gonna run this. It, it's so good in uh, pain decks, especially with uh, snake. You just like mm -hmm. double up on the pain triggers. One thing that's like I don't know, it's kind of weird. This just bugs me, but it's just collective has this weird relationship with tribes, where we have a thing that's a crook but it's a trickster, not a rogue, right? And then we have, so we have like trickster, punk, and rogue, and just there's no consistency between the way those three are used. It's just, but Grief, what do you think of this? That's probably just your weird tribal gripe that you usually have. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is just a cool card. I like uh, stacks, kind of, uh, stacks like effects. And this stacking everything from to, uh, from token creation to card draw to bounce, whatever, is just cool because it also taxes the first card you draw each turn. Um, so I like these kinds of sickening dreams kinds of cards, and I really miss the magician cycle, which has been rotated out for the most part for the stacks effects. This is just uh, this is just a return uh, return to glory. It kind of triggers. Um, pain strategies, self pain strategies as well, but whatever. I just want to. I just want to play the tech stack. <laughs> okay. So moving on. So these cards are different than the ones we showed you before, where you can add them to your deck. These ones are called uh, active submissions, and what that means is you can vote them into the game, but you don't have to worry about them in, in being in the game yet because they're not in the game yet. Best Dog Offering is a two-drop strength ritual from Duskmere with Draw a Demon and give it entrance, ready this, and both players gain three HP. I thought this was interesting. First of all, again, Cornmeal with the art. You've been doing some interesting stuff, and I just really appreciate that. Second of all, like, I like the idea of this whole, like, oh, it's, it, like, the whole, it's coming, and you have, like, this, like, thing you're, like, now holding over your opponent, or it's, like, oh, yeah, I drew a scary demon. It's gonna ready on play. You could probably use this as a pretty decent tutor with a little bit of forethought if we get maybe a build-around demon or two. I do know that Uplink and Woojack were looking to do some uh, demon top ends, so this could be a good way to tutor your top end if he ends up exploring that direction. I think that the the second clause here is kind of a joke, but maybe I'm wrong. Grief, what do you think of this? Grief, oh, yeah. Well, it's not really a joke. The thing is like, um, I think it's fine, a drawback. The more interesting part about it is actually legacy because demons are a deck that can kill on turn four. Um, yeah, because you kind of drop forlorn. All your stuff is redu uh, redu uh, all costs are reduced of your demons by two. This just basically draws you a zero cost demon that you can just play in the same turn, and you don't care about the three HP that your opponent gets, and just run them over anyway with a board of flying demons. Um, overall, just a little cute card that is a pseudo draw, uh, draw filter, um, open enough for most kind of. Um, most of the time, just being a top end filter. Maybe in the uh, maybe in rag, this is something interesting. Maybe you're trying to get your blood artist from this because uh, the blood artist that can I think only has like blood artist and one or uh, two more different demons. So this is okay in that regard. And kind of 
works against the tax effect of Blood Artist for yourself. Mm-hmm. It's just a good card. Empty, what do you think of this? Yeah, I'm just sort of scanning over the demons. Um, there's some interesting stuff you can do with this. I think um, my favorite use of this is uh, Warped Mind Flare. That card has seen like no play, so you can like convert this into a tutor for any mind card um, and do like a weird chaining tutor effect, which is pretty interesting. It's just like a, a solid tutor design. Um, it's nice to see some of these two mana cards. It results in some really interesting decks sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's sitting at five, so uh, start making some cool, more cool build around demons, guys. Scattered Corpse Bits is a zero drop neutral legend from Mortstall, Realm of the Dead Things, with innate and once 13 unique units under your graveyard, revive a five co- cost or less unit at the end of each turn. So, yeah, um, I actually really, really like this concept. First of all, the use of, of 13. And the particular reward and all of that. I just feel like if uh, Excalibur had spent a little bit longer on the flavor, this could have really sparkled. And so other people don't like it probably for other reasons, which I thought was interesting. Because even with the name being weird and all that, it's only sitting at like three. So I figured I would ask you guys because you guys might have a better sense of why this was bleh. Uh, Empty, I'll let you get started. I mean, I think the design is fine. It's a little weak in standard um, just because there's not, I mean, you can sort of mill with Marie, but at that, like when you're running that deck, it's going to be more efficient to just uh, go for Marie's uh, active and use that rather than going for this quest. Um, honestly, I think the main thing is that the art and the effect don't really mesh well together. Yeah, the art and the name were were big deals for me. Like, I feel like you know you could. I mean, this is this so especially when you're working on legends, this is a great opportunity to talk to the realm admin and like work something cool out, right? Because like there's stories that the realm admin might want to tell, or just fish around just for a fun flavor with a little bit. And then I feel like this card would really sparkle. Uh, Grief, what do you think of this? I personally couldn't care less about a quote-unquote flavor. <laughs> I'm just caring about the effect, and that's pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, to the fact that you were just playing self model or self discard, and you cut to a unique uh, 13 anyways, because it's just caring about enters, not stuff dying, not stuff being destroyed or sacrificed by yourself. No, you just need 13 uh, different cards in your graveyard. Oh, so it's starting different units in your graveyard. Units is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes or no. Uh, depending on the build, since this is a clear build around, you can actually get the self discard deck up to the point where you can actually get like playing two offs of cards. Uh, since you're reanimating that, uh, you're reanimating that stuff anyways. And with the cards that you can get there, they basically, if you're looking at stuff like in Spirits, the discard engines, they either create tokens as well, and so on and so forth. Um, And most of them work even better on board because the problem with them is the cost. Like four is one of the, uh, four is one of the more egregious costs of those kinds of engines since they're a little bit too costly to play uh, to hard play then they also rely on um, stuff from the hand and with that setup okay you don't care you pitch them i uh, pitch basically every card that you can find via mulling or discard and just play from there and at that point because it's a uh, since your deck is at that point build around that specific play style 13 units different units is not that hard I do think uh, probably maybe an interesting use of this is I do know in, and this is a single player thing, but my uh, one cost deck uh, often runs into the problem where it has a couple big support cards, namely really an agita- agitator and uh, big boy. And uh, they're also really good at coming up with a bunch of unique unit names via the uh, make a bunch of random one cost units. <laughs> so this actually could be an interesting bit of synergy there where you can use this uh, the payoff to um, potentially get your uh, 
make it so that your Hurlian Agitator and your big boy can't die anymore and then really stomp face with that. So that could be cool. But yeah, personally, if I'm to guess why it's not doing so well on the sub and what it could be doing better, um, I would say definitely look to flavor and ask around. And especially with legends, legends and lore can do so much, so many cool things. Dave, the parlor performer, is a two-drop mind 2 two human gambler from the Wonderstar Casino. With entrance, put Dave's pin on the bottom of your deck. You may discard up to three cards for each card discarded this way. Reduce the cost of Dave's pin by two. Dave's pin is a six-drop mind curio with uh, draw three cards from the bottom of your deck, and they cost three less. So curios, I always love talking about curios. Um, it's really cool. Um, it'd be nice to see some synergies with that tribe. I don't really know too much about this, but I mean, the art is absolutely spectacular. I know Spike Bird did this as a labor of love and I just wanted to highlight this maybe even for that alone. But uh, maybe I could, I figured I could, uh, let's see, where's it sitting? Sitting at six, so it's already doing pretty good. Grief, what do you think of this? It's a solid card. The problem more or less lies in the fact that it is for one hero <laughs> support and maybe manual, uh, since they kind of uh, flicker around with the top card, bottom part of your deck. So getting today's pin is actually a little bit more um, harder than it looks like, at least in the current uh, uh, in the current uh, collective environment. The moment Fortuno, the new hero, actually drops, we can get this easier uh, can get this more easily since he actually grabs the bottom card of your deck at that point uh dave becomes an even better support card for that hero um outside of that as i said manoa is probably what you want to do or maybe tutoring out um non-native cards to twin cards which at that point you okay you can do that in legacy partially um but if that's if Dave's pin is really that what you want to do, you're still sacrificing three cards in your hand, which leaves you at, I think, two or one card, depending on how you started out with earn one, if this is your turn to play. Well, I mean, if you wanted to go all in on this, if you wanted to go all in on this right now, pre Fortuna, um, you go ahead, you get this, you play something that makes a bunch of cheap tokens, drop this down T2, and then you can, so you can do like ring the bell, grab two tokens in your hand. Dave, yeah, well, talk you do uh, the prototype one. Yeah, yeah the, the, prototype the prototype one. Prototype I, I, could, I, could, I know billionaire purchases is the big one. I couldn't think of the small yeah. one. Mass production? Mass production. Yeah, mass production. Yeah. yeah, so you just do the throw mass production down, Dave T2, pitch your garbage, and then turn three now, Twim still is in. So yeah. you can. Twim stole your deck, yeah, and then you have a little bit of a, a leeway to draw one card, or you know, one one mana. But then at that point, if you did all that setup and you got all that, you do get a decent sized amount of ramp. But I don't know if that's enough to really carry a whole deck at this point. But you're right. Once Fortuna comes out, we'll see more. Yeah. Um, empty. What do you think of this? Um. Okay, so I can never remember this interaction. Do actions reset their cost reduction when they hit graveyard? Yes. Yep. Okay. I I always forget because um it was uh plasma splish was bugged for the longest time where it didn't. And I just thought that was the intended mechanic. Uh yeah, so with that in mind, this is just like very good uh Fortuno support. And like Fortuno is very encouraged to generate a bunch of trash in their hand to get XP. Um, and the, this just lets you dump all of it to get an actual payoff. Um, could be very interesting um, to see how this works with um, the Spirit Cat that gives the next action you play a rebound. Because um, the pin could be like, it's a pretty strong card if you can combo off with it, maybe get a few summon retriggers and stuff. Um, since it, can get a lot of cards down to zero if you're running a low to the ground deck. I think since it's Fortuna, I've, your highest mana cost, at least for the older build, was like three anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So cool stuff, cool stuff. 
It is drawing from the bottom, so you could stack a discount off your active mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. The Dragon King of Tides is a eight cost mine, six eight elemental fish dragon from nowhere in particular. With flying ward and summon, draw three cards, move fish drawn this way into play. And when you draw a fish, create an Ocean's Wrath if you don't have one. What's Ocean's Wrath? It is a six cost mind action with deal three damage to all units except fish. And while in hand, when you draw a fish, reduce the cost of this card by one. So really, really potentially uh, cool effect, you know. So the high roll off of this when this comes down is play this on, uh, play this out with some, probably with some ramp. Um, draw three fish. Uh, one of them moves to play, reduce the cost of your Ocean's Wrath by two, and then you get a four drop miniature little board wipe. So that's really, really nice. It does come out a bit late. That's a noticeable thing about it. But man, that art is absolutely spectacular. So I want to talk about this. Um, that, uh, the, the token off of it gives me uh, vibes from a, another card game that we're not going to I, I don't know if I want to state it explicitly, but very, very strong vibes. Grief, what do you think of this? You're muted. Okay. Yeah, I noticed. I mean, we can probably call that uh, that this looks very much like a blue eyes white dragon. So, <laughs> um, so, and I think we mentioned Yu Gi Oh! anyway, so already multiple times. I know, I was just playing around with it. <laughs> they're, they're very fond of doing things where they're, they're, they've got that like splash effect. It's on a yeah. lot of cards, actually. From that, yeah, that's from true. Um, but yeah, uh, regard, regarding the card itself, I love it. It's basically a reiteration of um, what's it called? Ultraladon. Mm hmm. Because every uh, because every of the uh, every fish card that you've drawn of the effect can be put into play. Yeah. So, at that point, okay, cool. I I get my, uh, I get my uh, board full of fishes. I trigger the other types, uh, princess, um, or river, river dragons. My, I get an innate board wipe, which is already reduced in cost. I just play that one, kill the board, fly over other stuff, create more uh, a bunch of uh, small tokens because the fish package isn't standard. I think even in the core set, if I remember correctly, in the yeah, altered on is in the core set. Yeah, so this entire deck just is very cute and uh, simple to actually run uh, thematically as a fish uh, ramp deck. And I think it's a very cool introduction for people into that archetype. Mm -hmm. um, overall, this is just a solid top end, regardless of what you do. Since this is the end all be all card, if you're running fish, you're playing uh, Dragon King of Tides. If you're not playing, uh, if you're playing Dragon King of Tides, you're definitely running fish. <laughs> yeah, uh, empty. What do you think of this? I just think it's too similar to Ultradon for me. Like it's nearly the like first half of the card is nearly identical. And the part that's actually really interesting and that I really like the Ocean's Wrath is like irrelevant most of the time because this is like your huge win the game finisher. Like at this point, when you play this on the field, you're either going to be dead to combat or you're going to win that next turn. Like Ocean's Wrath is kind of going to be irrelevant a lot of the time mm. i don't know and i mm. mean yeah sure like you can run six copies of altered on now but like fish are from what i've seen them being played they're sort of an early snowball like kill you before you can do anything deck um like having this many top ends feels a bit excessive especially when they have like the whole gap goldie package too Although I guess that's like a completely different deck at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can probably drop this like turn five already. So, what do you it's... are you running? Um, I guess you have a uh, like that two drop that gives you a coin and a tune. Yeah, that's still turn six though. That's not turn five. What else are you doing to reduce the cost? I mean, 
It's also an elemental. You have the fish cards that I think reduce cost as well. Oh, oh, it's an elemental. Oh yeah, so you can play this for like zero because <laughs> of uh, because bards exist. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's go on the fish bard package, guys. <laughs> um, At that point, we're definitely playing Yugi. Oh yeah, and my deck is a my deck is a, a fish a fish bard dragon element uh, fish bard dragon elemental garb goldie uh, goldie deck that has by the way a blood engine in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, we're playing rose dragons. <laughs> The Lone Hunter is a three drop strength, three two Lisebo warrior from Unguia with entrance. This duels an enemy unit if this can't duel the opponent instead. I, I'm not gonna lie, guys. Um, I, I'm not upset, I'm not disappointed, but I feel like this was kind of a slow week. And I think we already talked about this before, but uh, this was on Grief's pick, so we're gonna talk about it. Empty, what do you think of this? I mean, there's really not much to say about it, it's just uh, softback wolf, except for Lazabo which like it's good with the quests you get a free trigger and it's a bit of removal for a deck that has to rely on units for removal so it's fine Grief, what do you think of this why'd you pick it again i mean because i wanted to do, because i wanted to advertise it a little bit more <laughs> Let's see. I'm, I'm biased i want this card in the game okay <laughs> that's why <laughs> uh what was it at i might have accidentally ended the i think it's at six or so now okay so please yeah. upload it <laughs> i'm basically just gonna skip this um it's a card <laughs> decent art okay let's talk about some more Lisbo. the axe charger is a four drop strength three three Lisbo warrior from unguia with agile and summon Move a random Lisbo in your deck that costs three or less in the play. Now, this actually puts more context into my first pick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how is this not busted as crap? Like, this looks... You're getting basically a free... A uh, three or less, so I guess you don't really control what you get out of it. Yeah, it's because... bad in Lazabo decks. Yeah, uh, no. that actually not. I mean, it's certainly worse. Like the best way to run this uh, is to just run this and then the previous card and no other Lazabo. That's the way. Um, by the way, has any one of you played Magic? Has any one of you played Jump? Yeah. And do, yeah. Any I mean, I actually... I I played Magic in the Bloodbraid Elf era. I have played with and against Jun. <laughs> I mean, as a Bloodblade Elf player, you kind of don't care of what you hit as long as you hit something very high impact. No, no. Grief, you have it all wrong. I'm going to use this in my Elemental Fish Bard <laughs> uh, deck <laughs> as a way to get my Lisabo Bards back out. Oh my god. <laughs> this is going to be my redundancy for Crescenda Crash a lot and the other Lisa. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm in two colors now, Stranger. but. Stranger, this actually made sense. I can't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> this nonsense actually made kind of sense because the Lazabos, I think, actually are a little bit more uh, on board unit heavy, but I think they all have summons. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, there goes that plan. It's at eight, so it's gonna get in. So we're just gonna have to update it so we get this energy with the uh, the, the Elizabeth Bards, which is clearly what this card was designed for. So of course, of course, of course. <laughs> I mean, I really want Blood Braid Elf in, and this is just the best version of actually doing that. It would uh, be I cool mean... if we had, yeah, something that having sort of a pseudo cascade could be really nice. This is going to work great for my uh, held them good stuff deck. I get to Heldem. replace my stock back pouncers with something that can go face. And I get to run a ridiculously over curve four drop too. Man, mm. that's great. But yeah, other people are going to hate it. So I mean, uh, people uh, people hated Salamander and like a month later, like, hmm, can we please unnerf Salamander? It was a little bit more. It was a little bit. That's because the nerf gutted it. 
Yeah. <laughs> was a little bit too much animal cruelty against our poor Solomon. <laughs> Moving right along. The Rouge Reanimator is a three drop strength 2 1 robot vampire arcanist from Mortstall, Realm of the Dead Things. With ward and entrance, choose another unit. If this is in play when that unit dies, return that unit to play. Um, I really, really like a couple. Th First of all, it's almost becoming Mortstall Realm of the Red Things. Um, because we have now we have all these crimson and we have blood and the rose gold flagon. Well, I guess rose gold's a different kind of color, and then now we have the Rouge Reanimator. There were a couple questions I have about this card because there's absolutely nothing in the way that this thing's entrance is worded except a supposition of balance that that effect only triggers once. It doesn't. It triggers up to 13 times each turn. Awesome. Good. We're on the same page. Somebody else also brought up that... You can basically use this to dead eye navigator your unit <laughs> or, or dead eye navigator with each other in a sack deck because two of these pointing at each other results in 26 sack procs turn. Of course, we don't have a How do you get them to point at each other, though? What? How do you get them to point at each other? Uh, so, what you do is you play your second one targeting the first one, which is targeting something else, then kill it. Yep. And then oh, it yeah. will re-enter, letting it point at the other one. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. Yeah, it's not. It's really, it's really not that complicated. If you're familiar with Dead Eye Navigator MTG, you know exactly how to get this this thing to do its thing. Um, it has ward, which is also pretty interesting. Um, overall, Actually, I like, should check the blocks because with uh, with the wording like this. Um, it's kind of unclear whether another means not this or not named this. Oh, you're right. that, 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 that might complicate things. I think that I think there is a, I think there was a difference in different and another. Different <sighs> unit is a different blueprint, and another is just another unit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and so there's was... also uh, less characters. So yeah, so we have the whole text crunch complication. There's a this. decent chance that it's been used as shorthand. Yeah. Shite. Um, well, yeah, because we also had the other thing that was changed to another. So I don't know. Or no, I think another there just means not this. So, uh, yeah. So I feel like this could lead give way to a lot of really really fun busted uh, interactions that I really really like to see in this game, and just create two nigh indestructible infinite sack units. Um, even if it doesn't do that, it's pretty fine. I mean, it's just a good, it's a way to basically shield your unit from all forms of death. Um, does uh, does Flash Terror kill or banish? I'm not familiar with the card. I don't play this game, man. Uh, <laughs> that's because that would, that would be funny. Uh, if, you actually, empty? if you actually kill with a Flash Terror. Yeah. So I actually, I really like the idea of this card and like the, the whole like combo fuel. I think that's really cool. Um, I don't think this should have ward though. I think it makes it too difficult to shut down combos. I think if this just, you just pumped up the health, um, like we're already in a position where like a ton of late game stuff has ward. So duelists are like heavily favored. Um, I think like maybe taking Ward off a few of these sort of engine type cards and just giving them a bit more health instead would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, for this card, like the, the combos are just gonna be crazy. And I really like a lot of them. Um, my idea was you put this on another unit that has an entrance and then give it permanent minus one, minus one to get 13 entrance triggers, which you can do in standard. It's a bit of a bit difficult, um, but yeah. Like this leads to some really cool builds. Oh yeah, yeah, that could potentially be interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. It seems it seems jank as shit. Like I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what doors this is gonna open up, but I want to see what's on the other side. Grief, what do you think of this? I love everything about this card. I just wanted it. 
And yeah, the only thing that I would change about it is the word because that's a little bit too ridiculous. Um, on the other hand, it's just a very decent re uh, self, uh, reanimator target because of the entrance. So you can even play the long game where, okay, I discard it uh, and reanimate it later if I actually have my board set up. If I have the uh, second reanimator on the board, get my reanimation, get a second rouge, target the first reanimator, kill the first reanimator, and do the dead eye navigation loops, which would be fun. The problem is more that we don't really have um, recurring sec engines. We actually have to do some setup to um, have the units loop themselves. Mm. Since we don't really have uh, too much stuff that readies itself if it kills or if, if something dies, I think one of the ones is the pinger, which makes sense with it, um, also from Watchdog. But I think it also costs like three or two, uh, three or four mana, which is at that point a lot of investment to get this data navigation loop up. Yeah, so this is sitting at uh, zero right now. So I guess. As far as panelist advice goes, the best the, the best thing to do is probably not let the uh, submitted for your approval panelists talk about it, because that's just going to remind people of all the awful combos. So there's some advice I'm, for next time. I mean, time. the thing is like no, I'm just the, kidding. The Remove war. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh. I don't know. The Skeletal Watcher is a three-drop spirit, five, four, undead from Mortstall, Realm of the Dead things that we do not stop talking about this episode. With Agile and Summon, give another ally in Tomb, revive a, four co a cost four or less unit in your graveyard, destroy this. Okay, hold on. I gotta like, reread. Give another ally in Tomb, revive a... Okay. Oh, so we can revive it. Ah, that's cute. Uh, so main criticisms of this card, it does not have a color word in its name or and it's not strength affinity. No. <laughs> no, uh, seriously. Uh, really, really interesting sort of take on an effect. I really think this is neat. Um, plays in like a, re a reanimator in a way that I don't think we've really seen something quite like before. And, you know, you can get stuff other than your watcher back. Um, or play around with other reanimator shenanigans. If it was, and three is maybe the number to go with. If it was one less in single player, this would maybe be too good with a burial site. And at obviously at one, it just becomes like ridiculous. Uh, other things you could still do with this horrific hatching, I think would, or no, that's one cost unit. The three is on the other part of the card. Um, so yeah. Uh, cool stuff. Uh, Grief, what do you think of this? Why does Wellnacht exist? I don't know. Because at, at, in the last few weeks, every time an actual card that would actually be flavored for Wellnacht is just put into a different realm. <laughs> uh, like I said, it doesn't fit Mortstall flavor at all. It doesn't have a color word in its name, and it's got a different effect. <laughs> well, I mean, effect wise, like. Yeah, it is very wall knocked in effect. Yeah, it feels more like a wall knocked undead thing. <laughs> I mean, I think it's just a result of more Saul getting in tons of cards every week and yeah. wall knocked. It's probably not being more as a result of I think this was a restriction for the art on the art sheet and Excalibur Mech doesn't draw. Oh, that's right. Which is also why scattered corpse bits is scattered corpse bits. Um so yeah, grief, you have any other thoughts other than that? I like the card. It's simple. It's a beat stick. It kind of doesn't. I kind of don't care about this one. Um, in terms of reanimating the skeletal watcher, yeah, it's cool. It's a five. Uh, it's a five agile, a damage beat stick that basically replaces the unit that just uh, that just got killed. And at best, it's just a one mana dude that you're basically killing off. Um, you can put this on your uh, on your boar killer or similar stuff because you just get a trigger off of it. And even as a four mana unit, this is decent um, of affinity. Mm. The thing is, I think there are better units to hit than, as I said, a beat stick, even off of affinity. The best thing about this card is that it kills itself. So as I said, you can get your buckler triggers off of or the reanimation triggers off of. Um, but reanimation is just more versatile, so you just better grab something else. 
Empty, what do you, what, Empty, what do you think of this? It's a really interesting way to do a reanimation effect. And I, I really like the base design for this. Um, I think it may be kind of getting hit from the fact that undead are like really strong right now. And this sort of plays pretty naturally into the flesh jar artisan, like swing for 20 damage in one turn package. Um, and it's another 5 4 with agile. So people are obviously going to think of flesh jar artisan when they mm -hmm. see this. Yeah. Okay. There's some note. And our last pick for the week, Sticky Man is a two drop, three one tune alien from Karachar. With Rage, if this didn't survive and was dealt exactly one damage, revive it. So this is sitting at zero. Um, Art-wise, really nice use of uh, Spike Word, uh, really nice use of Prose Painter. Very cool vibe on the main effect. It feels oh, like, I, I totally get Karachar. Karachar works. Elusinogenica would have also worked. It gives that very trippy, like, sort of dreamy feel. Um, and so, nice use of the art for Tazar. So it's got a reference to the old stick land, et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of a weird effect. So it's just, okay, two drop, can't die to pings, can't die to dune walkers. Um, besides those two situations, it doesn't have too much going for it except being really top heavy. So um, also rage, if this didn't survive, that strikes me as a, just an entomb effect. Um, I, I, I don't know no, why this. If you, if you buff it, technically. Well, yeah, but it, but it, it's, it's if it similar, takes like, damage and didn't survive, means it yeah. died. Right. Yeah. So uh, you buff this, this an and then it gets hit by a one attack deadly unit. Yeah. Oh, okay. That is a really, really niche interaction to merit that word. It should just be an attune effect. <laughs> it should, okay. yeah. That is, what is going on with that wording? Um, okay, Empty, tell me why you picked this card, because I'm really curious. Um, it, it was a slow week. <laughs> Truth. I mean, it's not like there's it's not like there's nothing of value here. The idea of having like an anti-ping unit is pretty good because there's a lot of pings out there right now. The problem is, is like almost all the time, this is just worse than adventure. Um, like th this needs something else going for it. Maybe it could protect your other units from pings, like an aura effect. Just like something else to make this not like worse than a vanilla unit. Yeah, oh yeah, so like uh, your one HP unit, or your oh, but you can't say one HP. That's weird. That doesn't make sense. Controversial take here. Just make it one mana. Maybe. I would honestly, honestly, like a one mana piker with that weird quirky ability, I would go for it. I mean, as an entomb effect, really this strong. rage of it didn't survive thing is ridiculous. The thing is, like, I think I know why this kind of is studied and worded the way it is, but at that point, just make it a rock puncher with upside. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, the upside is so, so very anti one HP killing unit that I think it doesn't really matter too much in that regard. Just make it a rock patch. But yeah, <laughs> like, I, I mean, MT explained it's the one cost deadly thing. Technically, that is the one interaction where that varies from just having this be an entomb effect, but like it's not worth the word. Even though this is a common, I just don't think it's worth the extra confusion from the words. Um... But and that's my opinion on it. Um, we have hit the end of the list. Uh, we had a couple uh, slow week things happen. Um, if you guys had a couple like maybe old resubs that you've been putting off, maybe throw those into the ether. See what sticks. I Go on to the free art sheet. Make that card you've always dreamed of. Um, but no, there the were some cool designs that I really didn't enjoy talking about. It's just I think some of them just need to be cleaned up. 
Um, thank you, as always, uh, to Grief for joining me. Always nice to be here. And thank you, Empty, for uh, waking up to join us today because you still yeah, nice to have you. I hope you. I hope all is doing well. Uh, like and comment and subscribe. Those are three different things. Do all three of them. Make that your to-do list. Like, write it down on your phone right now. Like, grab a pen and write it down on your phone. Um, to remind me why I'm doing this. Because I do this for you guys. I do this as a labor of love. Uh, keep on playing collective and keep on voting on cards. Bye. See you.